Hi, and welcome to an introduction to Squarespace. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the menus inside Squarespace and just show you what each one does and where you'll spend most of your time. If we haven't met, my name is Christy Price. I am a Squarespace authorized trainer and expert and circle leader. So I've been using Squarespace since 2018 and it has really changed my web design business for the better. Okay, let's dive in. I have my chic one page Squarespace template that's for sale here. If you're interested in purchasing it, I'll put a link below for it as well. So when you are inside your Squarespace website, you will have this edit area here that shows typically your homepage when you first log in. Now we're gonna walk through all of these menu items on the left. Let's start in the upper left. There is the Squarespace icon here. Now this gets you back to where you are right now. So if we are in another part of the website menu, we can just click on the icon and it will bring us back to our starting point. Now my favorite thing in all of these menus is this search icon. You can also get there by clicking the forward slash button on your keyboard. And this helps you quickly find anything on the back end of Squarespace. So Squarespace often moves things around in the past six months before recording this video. We've seen all the settings get moved around. So now when I want to find something, let's say I want to replace the fave icon for my website, I can just start typing it in here. Click it and it will take me immediately there without having to wade through lots of menus to find it. So this may be your best friend. As long as you know what something's called, you can find it. When you're building your website, this top website menu item is going to be where you spend the bulk of your time. If I click on it, it sends us into pages, which are all the pages on the website. This is a one page website, so we only have one. And it will show you the pages in the main navigation, as well as all of the pages that are on your website. This is also where you can add a blog, a store, a course, or a member site. So if those are things you're interested, you would start here. There's a lot of styling done in other places on Squarespace, and we'll get to that. Underneath here, we have utilities, and these are important for a few things. So under system pages, you can customize your 404 page. This is the page that appears if someone clicks a broken link that takes them to a page that doesn't exist on your website. It's pretty standard and ugly, so you can make this fun or get people where you think they need to go by creating your own 404 error page. You can also change some of the checkout styles if you're using Squarespace e-commerce. And finally, you can style your lock screen. This appears if you have a password on your site as a whole or on individual pages. And lastly, under our website menu, we have website tools. These top two items have to do with adding custom code to your website. You may be familiar with custom CSS. It's a little bit of code that you can add that will change the way something looks on your website. I use it for changing the margin underneath my headers. I also use it for rounding edges on cards and list items. Lots of things you can do here. This is something you would typically find in a blog post or forum post and paste it in here. Now we also have code injection. This is for JavaScript. This is code that affects the functionality of your site. So if you purchase a plugin, if you are using Google Tag Manager, you will get code to paste into either the header or footer of your website. We also have a few messaging options here as well. So let's take a quick look at these. You can add an announcement bar. This is a little bar that appears on the top of every page of your website. You can also make it clickable. You can add a promotional pop-up to your website. This can be to either have someone join your mailing list or get them to take an action to click a button. Lots of options here for styling, how it appears, when it appears. We also have the option of adding a mobile information bar. This appears on mobile at the bottom of your website. And honestly, it's pretty ugly and I never use it. Finally, we have cookies and visitor data. So if you need to have a cookie banner on your website, you would toggle that on here. There's a lot of information in this GDPR guide if you are working with people from the European Union. That's it for the website portion. 
Now, again, that's where you're going to spend most of your time for a typical brochure site as you're building it out and editing it. If you want to grab my free Squarespace pre-launch checklist, check the link in the description below and you can grab it there. It will show you which of those settings are important and what you need to do before you launch your Squarespace website. If you are setting up a store, you will want to spend a little bit of time here in the selling panel. You can add products here, set up your payments through PayPal, Stripe, and publish your shop. There's also notes here about the online courses you could have with Squarespace. We talked about how you would start that actually under the website panel. And Acuity Scheduling, we're going to get to that later. That's set up in an entirely different place. Lots to explore here if you are doing e-commerce. Next up, we have marketing. And again, this is an overview. A lot of this has to do with email campaigns, a little bit about that promotional pop-up we saw before. But really, it is getting you into email campaigns, which is this first tab. Now, if you are just getting started with growing an email list, with email marketing, I love Squarespace email campaigns. I think it is one of the easiest email marketing systems out there. And so I would say start here. There is an additional cost. You can see current pricing on the Squarespace website, but you can send out three newsletters and try it out before you sign up for a plan. So if you're interested in email marketing through Squarespace, this is where you'd get started. We also have marketing tools. We saw a couple of these earlier under the website menu item. We also have URL Builder. This is for people who are tracking paid advertisement performances. So if you're doing that, this is where you set it up. Next up, we have contacts. This is anyone who has interacted with your website and given their information. So it could be someone who has subscribed to your email newsletter. It could be someone who has purchased something from you. It could be someone who's donated money using the donate block. And it's anyone who has filled out your form. You can actually see form submissions here. You could click on any form submission and see exactly what they entered into your website. So super handy to have all of that information here. Next up, we have analytics. So Squarespace has their own analytics. It's not as bloated as Google Analytics. There are some features it doesn't have, but at first glance, it's really, really easy to understand. So you can see how many people are visiting in a given day, um, the top sources by visits. You can break it down by desktop and mobile. You can also set up search keywords if you connect to Google Search Console. So lots of stuff here that you can dive into once you've accrued some visitors to your website. There's more under engagement and sales, so more analytics. Always good to have that data. Next up, we have scheduling. Now, this is actually called Acuity Scheduling. It's a company that Squarespace acquired several years ago, and they've done a little bit to make it look like Squarespace, but there is a bit of a learning curve here. So. Acuity Scheduling allows you to embed booking forms on your website so someone could book a time slot with you based on your calendar, and you can also send them reminders. And if you're planning on setting up discovery calls or paid calls with clients, this is a great way to do it. It's baked in to Squarespace, so you're not having to rely on another tool but there is an additional charge. And again, you can find that on the Squarespace pricing page. And finally, this is new as of 2024. You can create invoices directly in Squarespace. I know that they're working on rolling out more features here. It's pretty basic at the moment, but if you just need to send a quick invoice to a client and you don't use other accounting software, this is a simple way to do it. All right, we are done with kind of the meat and potatoes here of the website. Let's move on to the sides. We have an asset library. This is all of the images and videos you have added to your website. So you can see these are all of the images that I use in this template. They're all here. You can actually organize images by folder. You can upload images directly here before you add them to a specific place on your website. So there's a lot you can do with the asset library. I do have another video on this 
that goes into organizing your assets. So check that out if you want to learn more. And settings. Now, this is where things start to feel a little overwhelming. And I would really recommend getting my pre-launch checklist and then just typing in each item into that search icon or using the forward slash button on your keyboard to find each thing that you need to adjust before launching your website. There is a lot here. So I'm not going to dive into all of these, but I will hit a few highlights. So before launching your website, there are a few things that I like to add here. One is a fave icon, which is a small icon that appears by the title of your site in your browser. The other is a social sharing logo or image that gets shared when your site is shared on social media. There's a lot more here that you can look at, but yeah, lots of settings. We have other settings for domains and email. So this is where you would connect your domain to the site you've built in Squarespace. So Squarespace comes with this built-in domain. You can also change it, but you can connect your own domain that you've purchased to that website. So when somebody goes to christyprice.com, for example, they see my website that I've built on Squarespace. You can also sign up for Google Workspace and get a professional email. We talked earlier about selling. These all have to do with e-commerce settings here. So you would want to walk through each of these if you're setting up a store on Squarespace. Brand is confusing. So I thought this is where you would add your brand logos, submarks, your colors, your fonts. Nope. This only has to do with how you're interacting if you're using the AI tool in the text box. So when you're building your website, and you're adding text, there is an option, and you'll see this icon for AI to help you write your text. This is where you set up what you want that to sound like. There's a little video here you can watch, and you can describe your business and personality, and it will give you a preview. So I feel like more is coming here, but for now, it really is just your tone of voice. Next up, marketing settings. This one is super important, SEO appearance. This is how the world will see your website when it shows up in Google search results. So definitely, definitely think about this and spend some time filling it out. We also have meta, pixel, and ads. So again, this is just for people running ads. Third-party tools, you can connect extensions to your website. So some really common ones are Printful if you want to do drop ship printing. Go F Pro if you want to run an affiliate program through your Squarespace shop. Tax Jar is really common if you are running a shop. Weglot if you need to have your website in more than one language. So you can explore these as well. Permissions and ownership. This is where you'll come to add other people to your website to be able to edit the site, make changes. And there are different levels of permissions. If you're adding a web designer to help you with your website, you're going to want to make sure to make them an administrator. So this is where you take care of that. Next up, billing. This speaks for itself. This is where you can see the credit card on file, manage the hosting subscription you have with Squarespace, and see your past invoices. Developer tools. Some of this seems very scary, but there are actually things in here that you might need to use just as a basic user. So one of those is URL mappings. I have a blog post on this that I will link to below. But basically, if you are creating a new website on Squarespace and you previously had a website somewhere else, some of the URL slugs to your pages may change. And you may need to let Google know that what before was contact-us is now just contact. This is where you would do that. Some other options here, website protection, I recommend you turn on clickjack protection so no one can embed your website on their website, which would be really weird, but apparently it happens. Other things you can do here are if you're using Google Analytics, you can paste in the key that they give you so your website will talk to analytics. Same with Amazon. Other really nitty gritty things here that I'm not going to go into today and finally, Squarespace Labs. If you are a Squarespace Circle member, this is where you can turn on and try out things that are in beta that Squarespace is testing. If you're not a Circle member, you won't see this. So if you don't see it, don't worry. 
And one other menu item here is help. And when you open that, it's going to take you to the Squarespace Help Center, their knowledge base. You can find anything you need to know about Squarespace here. If you need to get in touch with them, if there's something you can't figure out, you can click contact us. And it's going to ask you to choose a topic. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Once you go through those menus, you'll get an option to either send an email or start a live chat with Squarespace. So that is how you find help as you're working on your website. And finally, you'll see over here your name and email address. And if you click that, it's going to take you back to your main dashboard in Squarespace where you can see all of the websites you have on Squarespace and all of your domains. Now that's it for all of the menus on the left-hand side over here. Just really quickly, I wanna show you a few other things that you will use as you're building your website. When you're on any page of your website, you can click edit in the upper left, and that is where you can edit that page of your website. You can see that it's made up of a header, sections, and the sections have blocks, and a footer with blocks. So that's how you get started editing your website. If you want to preview how your site looks on mobile devices, there's a button for that. So you can see the website here on mobile versus desktop. This paintbrush allows you to change the fonts and colors, buttons, forms, how things look and feel across your entire site. So if you wanted to update the font here to be Sophia Pro instead, you would hit the paintbrush to get into site styles, go into fonts, go into headings, and change your font family there. Again, tons and tons of options here. We won't go through them all, but that is where you start working on your site styles. And then one final thing I wanna show you is if you're working on a laptop, sometimes it feels like this left-hand menu is taking up a lot of horizontal space. So to be able to preview your website and not see those menus, you can click this arrow and it pops your website into the full view of your browser window. So it's a really great way to preview your site as you're working on it. And that's it for our introduction to Squarespace. I hope you found this helpful and I wish you all the best with your website.